This is Your Pain Game Podcast, where we talk about the game of living in and with chronic pain and trauma, getting to the heart of how to heal. I am your host, Lindsay Soprano. On this show, I plan on discussing with doctors, chronic pain patients, holistic practitioners, loved ones, and anybody that is interested in having their voice heard in the chronic pain and trauma world that we live in. So for those of you who have been listening to this lovely little show of mine, you know by now that I have a terrible relationship with food. I didn't truly realize how bad my relationship was until about six or seven months ago when I had a total meltdown, which also if those that know me know that having a total meltdown isn't like infrequent, (laughs) but I had a meltdown with a dear friend of mine and had to say the words, I have an eating disorder. And I didn't really realize that food was so emotional for me. Like it, it never was until I was blessed with this diagnosis of CRPS. I was never a foodie per se. I never avoided food. But when I did eat, I did eat healthy. But like if I'm honest with myself, I would rather just like take a pill, have it give me all the nutrients that I need and all the food that I need, and I can just keep going with my day. And well, of course, unless we're talking about eating tacos, because I can eat tacos all day long. (laughs) So, you know, when I've been thinking about my relationship with food, when I was just about to pull the plug on an abusive marriage many years ago, where my relationship with food officially changed and I kind of just stopped eating. And looking back, I think it was depression and anxiety that steered a lot of that response to divorce and loss. And it was a time of my life when my safety issues were kind of rebirthed from my childhood as well. And that's also when I was diagnosed with CRPS. So I got divorced. I moved from Austin back to Los Angeles. One of my dogs died and I was diagnosed with CRPS. And all of this happened in a matter of a few months. (laughs) So food kind of became an inconvenience. And as my pain increased, my appetite decreased. And obviously that's... Obviously stress is connected to a lot of that as well. But you know, I'm a smart little lady. So why am I struggling so hard to nourish myself when I know it's medicine? (laughs) And I'm getting super frustrated with myself because I know what I am doing. And I can't get myself out of this pain slash food loop of mine. And my body is 100% inflamed. I know that it is. My cholesterol is 350 and I weigh 110 pounds. And, you know, I'm starting to continue to make excuses for this and blaming it on the daily pain game that I play. And there are legit reasons for my lack of interest in food. And one of them is cooking and shopping. I can't stand in the kitchen for a long time because I can't stand very long because of my legs. And it's hard to cook in a wheelchair. And we've made food so fucking complicated and I'm sick of it. <laughs> and my attempt to at least like give myself some nourishment, I started making smoothies. And if I eat, drink one more smoothie, I'm going to barf all over the place. Like I'm so sick of it. So I have a hot little chickie here with me today. And she is going to talk to us about inflammation in our bodies and how food is medicine. And that we need to see this journey with food as friendship. A friendship that needs nurturing, as my guest will talk about today. And she has a cookbook, a bunch, a bunch of other things that we're going to talk about. But She says in her cookbook, and I quote, food is emotional. We eat with our heart, soul, memories, hormones, and love. Like take a beat on that. And I love that statement. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you my hot little chicky guest, Shelly Loving. (laughs) Hi. Hi, Shelly. You like have the best name ever, you know, I mean, outside of like Soprano. All right. So I have to tell you, uh, this is a running joke in our family. I used to tell people, you know, I married that name. So I don't really take credit. Honey, I've been dealing with my husband for 13 years. I take full credit for that name. I have deserved <laughs> that name. I love that. <laughs> I think we all deserve our last names as women to a certain extent. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, but it well, is a fun name. It is a fun name. And it com- and it's really good for you and reading your cookbook and all the things that I've learned about you about how the, a lot of where you come from in relation to food does come from a place of love. And so that's what we're definitely going to get into today. You um, are a certified nutrition chef from the Academy of Culinary Nutrition. 
And your mission so far is, from what I understand, is to teach us how to cook and eat healthier and have it be a little bit more simplified. Do I have that nailed down? <laughs> yes. And all I, I want it to taste good too. I want it, you to love the food that you make through me. <laughs> I, and I love that because there's so much you like, you look at these recipes and these things and you're like, okay, there's 7,000 ingredients and like 6,500 of them I don't even want to touch. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh man. Okay. Well, I'm rolling out the red carpet for you. I'd like to start by talking with you about your husband and what happened in 2014. And let's take it from there. Okay. So prior to 2014, I was just eating the standard American diet. I was eating out a couple days a week. I was making recipes on Pinterest with a lot of processed cans and sauces and making things because I was in a hurry. That was me. I was your average American just trying to keep my family alive. Uh, my husband was 41 years old and on Super Bowl Sunday of 2014, Denver was playing somebody. I can't remember because I was watching it from the ER, um, the emergency room, waiting room. My husband had a massive heart attack. Uh, we thought it was the flu. It was February. We live in Texas and that was a really bad year for flu uh, for some reason. And they were like, stay on top of it. The first symptoms you get, go go to the doctor. People are dying. So when he started giving me, having these symptoms Sunday morning, I was like, you've got the flu. And he's like, so I'm going to call Care Now, which is one of those dock in the box places. And we, we get there three hours later because we had to wait to get in there. By the time we got there, they said, Mr. Loving, do you have any chest pain? And he put his thumb right on his heart. And he joked and because he never lost his sense of humor. He joked and he's like, yeah, I got a little pain right here. He sound, by the way, I don't impersonate him very well, but he sounds identical to Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> he said, and he, everywhere we go, we get stopped. A sidebar. Everywhere we go. Do you know you sound like? And we're like, yes, we do. Yeah, thank <laughs> but you. Anyway, you should just make t-shirts. Yes, I, I sound should. like <laughs> We should, right? But anyway, he put us on his heart. And he's like, yeah, my, my heart hurts. Our chest hurts right here. And the, so they hooked him up to an EKG machine. He was having a massive heart attack. They put him in an ambulance. We get to the ER. 17 minutes later, he's having a stent put in. Um, he had a hundred percent blockage in his left circumflex artery. I am not in medicine, but that is the widow maker. So the reason that they call it the widow maker is that's the artery, the way that it's positioned in the body. You don't get the typical signs of a heart attack. Your arm doesn't go numb. Your chest doesn't hurt in the beginning. You go from feeling okay to dying very quickly. So I say all this because it wasn't my husband's time. After the surgery, an hour later, the doctor comes out to me and he says, Mrs. Loving, and he gently grabs my shoulders like he, in an endearing way. And he said, your husband is a very lucky man. He had no heart history, a heart disease history on either side of his family. He worked out five days a week. He was not overweight. He had some underlying issues that we didn't know. He had high cholesterol. He had undiagnosed severe sleep apnea, one of the worst cases the pulmonologist had ever seen. And we were inflamed both of us. So when we got home, I just instinctively as a mother and a wife wanted to fix the problem. I went to Google and I, to death, I Googled heart healthy recipes. And for some reason, my instinct kept telling me, Shelly, change what we're eating, change what we're eating. It's not working. Um, I didn't turn because we don't want him on seven medications for the rest of his life. That was no his diagnosis. And I yeah. said, there is, he, we both agree with that is not happening. He's 41. That is not our destiny. So together, um, we decided to do it through food. And I said, do you trust me to take the reins on this? And he's like, well, yeah, because I, I own a construction company. Like, I don't have time to do this. And I said, okay, you've got to do what I say, though. And he's like, okay. Well, then I felt the pressure. And I was like, I want to do this the right way. I didn't know about nutrition schools or anything. And, you know, when your stars align, it's a beautiful thing. And the Institute for Integrative Nutrition popped up on my Facebook. Don't know why. Don't know anyone that went to it. It's just, it was meant to be. So I attended the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. It took a year and I learned so much. But they didn't teach me the cooking part. So once I learned a lot of the nutrition part, you know, what causes inflammation and all that, I was like, you know what? Now I want to learn how to apply it in the kitchen. Two years later, I went to the Academy of Culinary Nutrition where I took what I learned at IIN, what I learned at the Academy, and I put them together into this beautiful relationship in my kitchen on how I could heal my husband crazy thing is I was healing myself too. And I didn't know I was sick as well. So I'm talking to anyone who has major problems or minor problems. If you have inflammation in your body and you have little tiny symptoms like dull headaches, fatigue, brain fog, joint pain, all of that is stemmed from chronic inflammation. So I had all of these things going on in my own body. 
So I was feeling better than I had ever felt in my life just by concentrating on lowering inflammation by looking at ant- and eating and consuming anti-inflammatory foods. Fast forward, another year later, I really wanted to hone in on my kitchen skills, so I went to culinary school. So at those three schools and staying in the kitchen and dedicating myself to helping him heal, he has gone from seven medications to one. Over the course of about five years, we did that. And now he has completely reversed the damage to his heart. The cardiologist said to him in his last EKG, I can't even tell you had a heart attack. You were in the 1% of my patients. You were doing the work. What are you doing? (laughs) And so my husband told him and the cardiologist got my business card because they're not taught nutrition. It's not his fault. They teach what they learn, right? Um, And nutrition is not part of their package deal in school. So um, it's up to people like me that have a tragic event that turn it around it is now my mission to pay it forward. I want to help people. I, there are so many people in pain and there are. I am not a doctor and I cannot give medical advice, but what I can do is encourage people to start in their kitchen, roll up your sleeves and incorporate some anti-inflammatory habits for long-term positive health results. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, and you you really, di- I'm glad that you brought up the point about doctors and how this is just not part of their school of thought because it is not. And I don't, understand it. And we've talked about it on this show and we will continue to talk about it, even though I'm like the worst person when it comes to nutrition and I'm working on it. I'm not great, but I'm getting there. Um, and it's people like you coming into my life that have are starting to motivate me to think differently about food because it's not like I don't like the taste of tacos. It's just... You, you said something in your cookbook about how like I can't possibly live without cheese or something like that. It was like some quote because that's me. I'm like, how is it sure. possible? Because outside of cheese, I don't eat any dairy. Like I'm big picture, I'm gluten free. I'm touch and go on alcohol. Like I'll go like months without any. And then I'm like, eh, I feel like drinking a bottle of wine tonight, you know? But big, big picture, I don't feel like I eat all that bad when I do. It's just, it's my frequency of it. I don't eat enough. I don't like, I don't kick off my day with a really good hearty breakfast. I'm like, oh, it's one. Maybe I should eat something today. And I think that you nailed it in the beginning where you were talking about how the, the typical American woman that we work and we do this and we do all these things and we end up being the last person on our list. And here we are going, okay, great. Now I'm gonna like, what am I going to do? I'm just ugh, forget it. Let's just go out to dinner, you know? Right. And, and that cycle, and it's more freaking expensive. I know everyone complains about, oh my God, eating healthy is so expensive. I'm like, dude, <laughs> 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 have eating you out seen is the, the most price expensive. of our food? It is so expensive. A bottle of wine at the restaurant is $80 and I get it from Total Wine for 12. <laughs> yep, I know. Starting you there. Know, I, think, I think the other thing about when you were talking about priorities and, and I think our priorities are just so screwed up. Like food is not just a tasty thing that we do. It is our lifeline. It's our tools that we give our body. So why is that not at the top, at the very top of our priority list? And I speak to, to I'm putting myself in that category as especially in Americans. Like we, our meal planning and our deciding what we eat is never at the top of that priority list. We have a ton of priorities. I'm not going to lie. We have responsibilities. We have careers. We have children. We have schedules. We have the things. But why? Why are we sacrificing our food choices above all of that? When, if we don't have that as a priority, none of that other stuff falls in line. We can't have a successful career. We can't be healthy. We can't be vibrant for our children. We can't have a successful career when we're feeling in pain and we're suffering and we're going to the doctor and we're spending our money on prescription drugs and the food is at the top, all the other stuff can also fall into place. That's my opinion. I, well, yeah, no, and it's, and, it's, and it's a good opinion. To have. <laughs> and it's one that I think we all should embrace because I mean, I, guys, like even this morning, I was like so mad at myself because I'm like, oh, I'm here, I'm gonna get ready to talk with my girl about nutrition and everything. And I did not even do that this morning for myself. And I'm like, fuck, like so beat myself up about it. And you talk about guilt and shame and all of that in relation to food. And so can you talk to me a little bit about that? Because I feel this guilt, not because I'm not, it's because I'm not eating. Yeah. Not because I'm not eating well. It's just when I do eat, I eat well. I just, I just don't do it enough. Like I don't, I don't nourish my body the way that I should. And most I'm going to speak for women as a, just a general umbrella are the opposite of that. Most women eat with emotion and they eat too fat and stuff and they're, they're, they're gaining weight. And that's why a lot of people come to me is because they know they need to lose weight. The weight is causing health issues. So 
it's, I can speak to both, but food is, what did you ask me? Food is about emotion. Is that what you asked me? We were talking about emotion and we were just talking. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I tried to, oh, shame. That's what you said. Shame and yeah, guilt. Yeah. Shame and guilt. There we yeah, go. Yeah, we're yeah. circling back. We're circling back. Sorry. I, I, I got sidebarred. Shame and guilt. I talk a lot about this because we are in a diet culture. And when people think that they need to, I'm putting in an air quotes, get healthy or lose weight, they immediately revert to that word diet. They look up the latest diet scheme. They starve themselves. They count things. And then what happens with that is they fall off the bandwagon. They get tired of it. They get bored. They lose the weight and then they go eat the cheeseburger. What happens is then when that happens, they have guilt and shame around any time they eat, quote unquote, unhealthy or bad, or they cheat. I hate that word. You mentioned that in your cookbook in the beginning part about how about the guilt and shame. Like, don't, like, if you slip and fall, don't worry about it. It's okay. Get back up again. Yeah. So I feel like the diet culture has created that guilt and shame. So when you do eat quote unquote bad, you have guilt and shame. What is that? That's so self deprecating. That's terrible. So I tell people every day, start fresh. If you go out with your girlfriends on Thursday night and you eat a whole block of cheese and have a whole bottle of wine, awesome. Yes. Friday morning. Eat a healthy breakfast Friday afternoon. Eat a nourishing lunch. You know, it's all about balance, but do not show yourself shame because you had one bad choice. The next day, make a better choice and show yourself some grace. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, that's a problem, especially with our processed food and our and our time and we've got to get things done. Like my sweetie, for example, and I know we talked about this on my meet and greet. He wakes up super, super early. He's up at 3.30 in the morning and he's been doing it for 30 years and this is what he does. And he grabs the same crappy food in the morning and all. at least he's feeding himself in the morning, unlike myself. But it's not necessarily great food. You know, it's fast. It's thrown in the microwave, call it a day. And I'm trying to get him out of processed food and I'm trying to get me into eating whole food, eating better. But when we're together, because we live separately, the back and forth and all this balloon, baloney between Orange County and Los Angeles, So we're together only for a couple of days during the week. And when we're together, we do great. But during the week when we're not together, we're just like, "Uh." like he's not going to cook for himself. Not even remotely happening. Me, I'm trying to. But even then I'm like, well, I made all this food and I guess I'm going to eat like, you know, a tablespoon of it. And I just, the, the schedules that we keep and the easy access to processed food and throwing it in is a really big problem in our, in our world, specifically in America. Because when you travel overseas, food is at the forefront of all they do in Europe. You go there and it's this beautiful food and you don't have any stomach it's upset. Real. You don't have, it's, it's real. It's real. Food. I'm like, wait a second. Did this goat cheese just come from that goat? They're like, yes, it did. I'm like, oh. Yep. It's amazing. And we don't Guess have that here. We don't have it here. It's horrible. No, no, it doesn't make it doesn't make uh, the big box people any money. Of course, if not. We did that. Of course not. No, <laughs> Why let's, would let's, we make, do that? Let's, let's make big pharma and corporate America just as happy as could be. <laughs> Put our Americans health in at first. I mean, no, that's silly. Come on. Absolutely not. What kind of conversation? Wouldn't make us any these? money. No, absolutely not. Like we were talking about before, like we should probably just not be able to vote anymore. Cause what do right. what does what do our minds even matter? Right. <laughs> Okay, so you made all of this incredible, you got your husband healthy, you got yourself healthy. And without even knowing, that's interesting that you're like, I didn't even know that I wasn't that great. I know that I'm not that great, but I love to hear that you didn't know because there are plenty of people like skinny fat is something that I like to talk about because I'm super, super skinny. But I know that my body, just based on my cholesterol, I mean, I've got liver is part of the problem, but also CRPS has just gone into my gut. So it just affects all kinds of different things in there. So what do we do to simplify and eat better without feeling guilt and shame about when we do slip down? Because it's going to happen. We're going to go out, like we're going out to dinner tomorrow night, this fancy restaurant that we love, and we're not going to eat the greatest food on the planet. I mean, it's all healthy and really good, but you know, we're still going to (laughs) indulge. It's good. You should. Yeah, you should. Um, I want people to have a healthy relationship with food. And that that means enjoying the foods that you really love. My, I really like to implement an 80-20 rule. And that's an ideal world. Most people, even like people who are just starting, I'd be happy if they did 60-40. But when I say 80-20, 80% of the time, try to eat with cognizance. Plan some of your meals so you know you're getting your nutrients and save that 20% for your fancy night out, your Super Bowl party, your night out with the girls. Uh, any kind of party or event or sporting event or whatever, save it. I tell people, plan your weak moments. Let that be your 20%. 
So when you know you have something coming up, if, if Thursday night's your night to go have that fancy dinner, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, really get in all your nutrients, get your vegetables, hydrate. So on Thursday, you have no guilt because you earned it. Not You don't need to earn it. But when, when you go, you have less guilt and shame because you're like, I know I prepared for this and my body is going to receive this well because I treated it really well Monday through Wednesday. Because people ask me all the time, the number one question I get is, Shelly, what do you think about alcohol? Well, I saved my entire 20% for wine because wine is my best friend. I freaking love red wine. I me too. Love red wine. I love red wine. So uh, my 20% is red wine. I'm going to be honest with you. I have a glass a night and um, I have my blood work done regularly. I'm really healthy, but the 80% of the time, I really want that wine. So 80% of the time, you know, like today we had a very healthy lunch with a lot of greens and a good protein. And tonight we're going to have the same and I'm going to have my glass of wine with no guilt. Yeah, that's great. And because I think a lot of that, you know, I've, I've got a girlfriend of mine who's been dealing with weight issues for as long as I've known her since we were, I don't even know, 15 years old and now we're 45. But her relationship with food is different than mine in that she just eats and eats and eats and eats and eats. Yeah, and, which is very common. Very common. Yeah. And I don't, I don't understand that piece. And so it's hard for me. And, and my sweetie is the same way. He'll eat till his, like he... I'm like, your brain hasn't even caught up with your activity right now. Like you're going to feel like you just ate Thanksgiving dinner for every meal if you eat like this so quickly and so fast. Like take a breath, chew it. I don't know. Do something other than like stuff. Like I'm, I'm good at pacing, but a lot of that is because I'm being more intentional. And I know you talk about that as well, about intentional, your food choices and the way that you're, the way that you put your recipes together is extremely intentional. And I think if to circle back to like what you were saying about if you make these choices along the way in these 80% and the 80%, if you make these choices, you can put some plans in place so that you can be a little bit debaucherous with your food for the 20%. It doesn't put as much pressure on you to feel like, oh man, I let myself down again, that guilt and that shame. And I know that she deals with that because she'll just do like a double Western bacon cheeseburger and then, you know, throw herself yep. into a coma in her bedroom crying, right. you know, like, right, right. And, and that's really, really not the way that we should be doing this at all. And that's nope. certainly not food either. <laughs> no. And I just want people to have a good, healthy relationship with food. Sorry for the pun. I just want people to understand that food is, you know, it's the one relationship that we all have to have our entire life from birth to death. We all have to eat. So it's the closest relationship we're ever going to have with anybody or anything. So we've got to love it. We have to take care of it and nurture it like a marriage, right? We can't not eat. Yeah. So we have to love that relationship and learn a good balance with it, just like a marriage. You know, it is a relationship. So um, when you said earlier, I talked about that in the book about intentional. I talk about this a lot on social media is um, intentional eating versus habitual eating. So habitual eating would be going to the grocery store and buying the foods that you always buy because it's what you've always done. Let me give you an example. I grew up on some staples in our house. I was raised in the 80s. I'm 47. And I was raised on Oreos and Hidden Valley Ranch dressing. My mother yes. just always bought. And I did the same thing raising my kids. I knew what they liked. I grabbed it, never read a label. That's habitual eating and shopping. I talk a lot about in making it intentional, which means you've got to do some extra steps. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to cause a little bit of meal planning and prepping. It's going to make you read every food label when you get to the grocery store. But that's intentional eating because you you have the brains, you hold the power on what you're putting in your body. Habitual eating, you're letting the big box companies and you're letting your bad habits create your destiny and your health. Yeah. And it's like, I cannot have 80 Costco burritos in my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 sweetie. I'm talking to you. It's just, it's, it's, it's that kind of stuff where it's just the quick grab because we're like, we've got to go. We got to go. We're going, 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 going. And then it's like, great. Why did I even eat that? Like that wasn't nourishing. That made me feel gross. I actually know that that was a bad decision to make and I still made it. And then I feel like shit after I ate it. And now I'm beating myself up about it and so on and so forth. And then the, then the process is repeated. I don't know how to get out of that loop. I'm not in that loop. I'm, I should probably be grabbing a Costco burrito versus nothing, <laughs> but I still won't. So that's the thing. I'm like, right. but I'm not going to put that crap in my body. I'd rather not put something in than put crap in. So it's like, it's a real challenge that I'm working with. And I actually have tried to work. My therapist 
and I, he doesn't work with me in relation to like this dis- eating disorder thing that I, I guess I have and I know I have it. I just, it's a really weird thing for me because I don't have body dysmorphic issues. Like I don't know, I don't, I don't need to lose weight. That's for sure. Like I don't, I just, my body looks different than it used to when it was really healthy. And so I'm super atrophied and all that. So I've got, I guess, a little bit of body dysmorphic from that, but I'm worried about putting on weight from eating because I can't put any more weight on my feet. Yeah. So up here in my brain, it's like, well, shit. Yeah. <sighs> if I put on 10 pounds, which I need to do, it's going to be more weight on my more, feet. Right. Right. So I talk myself into not eating. Yes. Like a complete asshole. <laughs> which is why I want to help you because once you start nourishing your body with foods that it is dying to get, your, your body is screaming on the inside for nourishment. Oh, like so and the loud. nourishment is going to come from a, a healthier diet. But it's kind of, um, it's a beautiful thing to watch people transform when they start adhering to some of my tips and tricks. I am not a miracle worker. I'm the messenger. You have to do the work. I'm the one that helps people and tells them and encourages them and inspires them and uplifts them to do it. I'm like the two hands on the on the on a baby's bobo. I'm just pushing, 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 encouraging, encouraging. But at the end of the day, I can't push a rope. It, you have to want it. You have to want it. But once you start implementing some nourishing foods, I am confident when I say this, it's going to be easier to stand on your feet. Yeah, because your body is going to receive those nutrients and use those nutrients to help you with your issues. For sure. Especially when it comes to nerve damage. So like, geez, I don't remember which guest it was, but it was a couple of weeks ago, but we were talking about the fact that our nerves are literally surrounded by, they're supposed to be surrounded by fat, basically, where it, so everything is slippery and slidey and there's no, you know, everything's all healthy and everybody's communicated, all the nerves are, but when you aren't giving your body any form of fat, the nerves are completely, they're like open. It's like an open wire, right? That's not like wrapped around like, why? wow, that was a very good little visual of Lindsay. Thank you. I'm nice. patting myself on my back. No, like electrical <laughs> tape, right? Like the electrical tape around the wires so it's not live and it doesn't hurt you. And it doesn't, right now, I feel like I am those exposed wires in my legs and in my feet where it's like zap, 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 zap all day long, all day. And so I was reading about like the myelin sheath for our nerve endings and all of that. And the number one thing is, well, you have to eat fat. And I'm like, okay. healthy fats. I'm healthy talking about that fat. a lot. Oh, I know, I know. But it can't every be recipe, cheese though. Every recipe in my cookbook tells you the source of healthy fat in that recipe. It's that important. Our, and it's not, everything in our body needs fat. Our brains more than anything need fat. And that's one of the main reasons, one of the big reasons that they won't talk about is why there's so many mental health issues and Alzheimer's and dementia because we are not feeding our body, our brain, what it needs to work properly. It's right. going to break down. So yeah, everything in our body needs healthy fat. Yeah. And it's nuts because we think, you know, all to go back to like what you were saying earlier about all these diets, like remember Atkins or was like, just eat hamburger patties and cheese and... <laughs> She just Disgusting. flipped me off, even though I know it wasn't to me. Not it's to you. Oh, so gross. Oh, I know. But I love you so much for doing that. <laughs> I'll do it right back at you. <laughs> I just talked about Atkins in my blog this month that was released yesterday. I talk about that. It was the first diet that I actually remember that really took off for marketing and they had commercials for it. And now, do you know how many health problems have come from Atkins 20 years later? It's yeah staggering the heart issues that people have had, you know, and, and other diets that are now popular are going to have the same problem. Mark my word in 10, 12 years, the big, huge fad diet that's made people millions of dollars. Yep. It's going to have long-term problems. I promise you. I remember when I was doing Atkins back in the day and I didn't need to, by the way, I was perfectly healthy and, <laughs> you know, I was just fine. Like, I don't know what the problem was. But while I was in my apartment, I remember it like it was yesterday, just when you said this, God, this is pulling up a random memory. I was on AOL dial up. <laughs> You've got mail. <laughs> That's I remember how old it. Atkins is. And guess what? Atkins is still around in CVS or wherever. You still see their stupid bars and all of that stuff. And a lot of that too is those grab those bars, grab those things. I don't even know. Are these are these bars even healthy for us? For me, no. no not a chance. No. All processed. 
even when you get down to like the plant-based food, right? Oh, we're going to turn cow into plants. You're not turning cows into plants. Obviously, you're trying to make a cow taste out of plants. It is all entirely processed. How is this any better for us? Not. I mean, it's it's not. Yeah, you know. And I'm in marketing. I'm about ready to quit because I am doing this show in and of itself. I do marketing for a lot of the things that I don't, that I'm talking about how much I don't care for. And I'm having some major ethical issues with myself. I'm not, I, I can't do this anymore. And so I've ditched a couple of them here and there, but it's just very interesting. One of the things in your cookbooks that I in your cookbook that I want to talk about because there's a couple of things that I definitely know that we need to keep talking about. But one of them that I love about your cookbook is that you have an opportunity with each and every episode to write. There's a place for notes and for you to like kind of journal to a certain extent about maybe how the uh, well. Actually, I'd like you to talk about what your thought is on how to utilize your cookbook. Her cookbook is called What's on Your Fork. Oh, she's so cute. She's always got little like. Things on forks and pictures. And she's like all over the place. <laughs> Anyways, it's easy, healthy meals for everybody. And I love that everybody, everybody, right. right? Everybody. So can you talk to me a little bit about how you want us to use this cookbook? Because I'm going to make everybody buy this thing. Yeah. So the cookbook is more than a cookbook. I kind of wanted... Um, I didn't want it to be just an average cookbook. It's kind of like a cookbook meets food education meets food journal. I know when I make a recipe, I like to make it my own. So if I'm making a recipe and I don't like something in it, so for instance, I hate raw white onions. I just don't like them. So if I ever see that in a recipe, I'm not doing it. But I want to encourage people in my recipes, if you need to substitute something for allergy purposes, or if you don't like something, totally fine, but take some notes and add something back in. If you're taking out the tomatoes, put in some bell peppers, If you you know, get the nutrients in there, but write it down so you can make this recipe your own. If you want to add an extra teaspoon of salt, write it down. So Yes, every recipe has a notes section. Every recipe tells you the good, healthy source of healthy fat, protein, and fiber. Every recipe tells you the source of those because it's very important that you get those every day in your food. So I want to show people, here's a recipe, it's healthy, but let me tell you why. And so also in the cookbook, there's also tips. Like every other recipe or so, I will either tell you a cooking tip or I will tell you a meal prepping tip, or I will tell you the why behind why I used some of the ingredients in those recipes. So the book is like me hugging you in your kitchen while you're making dinner for your family. <laughs> well, and I, lo- I love that because there, there is the why. Like, just do it. Just eat it. It'll help you. But why? I want to know, right. especially for me, because I educate and I research and I read so much and I'm trying to find blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, there are so many simple things that can be changed in our diet that are really not this mountain of like, oh my God, making a mountain out of a molehill, right? Like, oh my God, I have to change how I eat. Oh, oh this is going to be horrible. You make it you make it look so easy and so simple. And it actually is. Like in studying some of the recipes when I was researching for us today, I was like, God, almost every single thing in here, I actually would eat. Yeah. And that does not happen often with me. Because I'm like, I... wow, this is like, ew, I don't want to eat half of this stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted it to encompass my teaching. So I feel like something that sets me apart. There's a, you know, the 100,000 nutritionists out there. Yes. There's <laughs> dietitians everywhere. But what I wanted to do to set me apart, and I'm not dogging anyone else, but this is why I wanted to have a different approach. I want people to know it's doable. I don't want to sit here on a pedestal and say, do, do, do. I want to show, show, show. So you will see me cooking on Instagram. You will see me cooking in my um, on all of my online programs. I want to roll up my sleeves and show you it can be done. And I don't want to just hand out meal plans like candy and say, good luck. I want to stand beside you in this journey. And I want to help you do the physical work in your kitchen. Because it's one thing for somebody to say, you should do A, B, C, D. You should eat E, D, F, G. But yeah. it's another to actually stand next to people and help them in their kitchens and virtually and do it with them. So I think that's what, what I wanted my cookbook to encompass is like me showing you and telling you the why behind why I'm doing these things. Yeah, because that's I think that's really important. And it supports your intention. Mm-hmm. Intentional eating is the why. Because it's like, okay, I'm here. Why am I actually doing this? And And I talked to my sweetie about this too. I'm like, dude, I don't understand how this is what you would want to put in your body, like not even for a second. And then he's like, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to. <laughs> you know? Right. 
we have two challenges in our household. And I think that we're going to get to this place. Well, not think we have to get to this place where, you know, we've got his age and my health and the two things combined, they need to start being more aligned so that we can both take care of each other as we age. I have no idea what this disease is going to do to me. No long, I have no clue. All I know is that right now I have complete power. And as a control freak, what's so weird is that I feel completely out of control when it comes to food. Like completely out of control. Like like an alcoholic being unable to like, I have to drink, I have to drink all day. I feel like I, I'm completely out of control with food. Like, yeah, I don't, and I'm not really sure how to go about it. I'm working on it, but I would, in meeting someone like you, and that's why I was like, I'm bumping you up to like next recording <laughs> because I was like, I got to get this out now, especially while we're in the beginning of the year. And I know yeah. we're, I know it's March and I don't even know, how is it freaking March? I, I don't know. know. But that in the beginning of the year, while we're all like, oh yeah, we're going to make all of our, you know, New Year's resolutions. I don't do those because, you know, that's just setting me up for complete <laughs> failure. I do my resolutions in October. <laughs> there you go. So I know that you've got some stuff that's going to be coming out soon, but let's talk about really quick before we jam. The, your, your cookbook is just absolutely amazing. And I'm so happy that, I, that we found each other. And again, it's called What's on Your Fork? Easy, Healthy Meals for Everybody. It will be all in show notes and social and all of that. But you've got a couple other things going on. You've got freebies for healthier cooking. You've got an event coming up. You've got your online community. Can you talk to me a little bit about all of those different things here? Sure. Yeah. The first thing that I'd love to talk about is um, because everything I teach is around in chronic inflammation and how it relates to food. I have a free event coming up um, at the end of March and it's virtual. But what I'm going to do is talk very basic for three days. It's just a 20, 30 minute video a day. It's not going to take a ton of time and it's pre recorded. So anybody can attend with any schedule. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down what is chronic inflammation, what foods cause inflammation, what foods reduce inflammation. So what a lot of people don't understand is they know there's foods that cause us to get inflamed. And so they'll eliminate them. But what they're not getting, what what light bulbs are not going off is they're not incorporating the foods that help lower inflammation. There are so many foods out there that will help your body and reduce the inflammation. So you need both. So we're going to talk about that a lot. Um, We're going to talk, and I'm going to keep it very, my teachings are very simple because I want you to be able to relate it in your own world. I talk to people like they're nine years old. Because I want you to understand the information. I don't want to talk above you. So that's something that I pride myself in. Is So this three-day event is going to be the very basics of chronic inflammation and how you can reduce it in your body through the foods that you eat. So I'm just going to encompass that whole topic for three days. I'm going to cook a couple of recipes in the event and everything. So um, they can go to shellycanhelp.com forward slash March to register for that free event. That's awesome. And I love I love the part that the fact that you're going to be cooking and be, I'm going to be there. Um, but of course I'm going to be there, please. <laughs> Cause I need you. I know. <laughs> we I both you need there. you. I mean, we do. I mean, and I like the point that you're part about. I've, I have eliminated everything inflammatory outside of my red wine, right? Outside of that, I've like the gluten and the dairy and all of that stuff. I'm a pretty good girl in that department, but your point is spot on about, but we don't add the foods in. We do right. a lot of don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. The, right. that's, that goes into our guilt and our shame. We're the do, nutritionists and doctors and wellness people, whatever, like, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But then there's a little bit of like, okay, well, I did all of that and I still feel like shit. And I also am not eating cheese and I'm mad. I'm really mad about that, but I had right. to stop eating cheese. Like, I'm angry. <laughs> so, what can I do? <laughs> To replace that, because a lot of replacements for cheese, let's not let's not lie to ourselves. Agree. They suck, and they're processed. Agree. Yeah, I agree. agree. I agree. I'm agree. posting recipes. I post recipes on um, Instagram is my jam, and I'm on there all the time making stuff for reels, videos, and stuff. And I post a lot of dairy free recipes because I want people to fall in love with it. I want people to know a dairy free life is okay, and food can still be delicious. And there are great substitutes out there that you can make in your own kitchen and whip them up quickly. So yeah, well, I agree. And I, I want that. I want a cookbook for me. This is what you're going to do for me. Okay. So I need a cookbook <laughs> on how I can live without cheese okay. and also what I can do for breakfast. breakfast. Because I know when, if I do eat something in the morning, yeah. I definitely feed myself throughout the day oh, because that's good. Okay. I'm hungry. So then I will eat. I have to eat in the morning. I know it. Very it's important. Not, I know. 
I know. That's the tone I for know. the whole day. You're telling your body how to act all day long. I know. I know this information. <laughs> But I wake up and I get in my group because it takes me like about two hours to get out of bed because my legs aren't really rocking quite yet. So I'm like laying there and I'm like on Instagram and I'm like, "Mm, this is so stupid. And then I get up and then I get in my sauna and then I'm cooling down and then I got to get in my office and then I got to do that and I got to shower because I always show up. And then, okay, now it's one o'clock. Like right now, it's it's 11.45 Pacific Standard Time. I have not put a morsel of food in my body yet. Think about all the meal planning you could do in that two hours every morning. <laughs> Ooh, I'm while I'm laying in bed. That's I'm just not saying. Bad. Well, I'm going to call you then and we're just going to get on <laughs> Zoom every morning. Welcome. You just did that to yourself. <laughs> oh, that's okay, funny. so Shelly can help. And this is absolutely a legitimate statement. Shelly can help, but you can find her on shellycanhelp.com. But she also has an online community membership and app. Can you talk to me about that a little bit? Yeah. So for the last two years, I've really wanted a, I wanted to, they call them memberships where people pay monthly and then you give, you offer a service. And so my, my business is all virtual. I don't do anything. Rarely do I do in-person teachings. So I want, for the last years, I've wanted a membership. Couldn't do one last year, kind of wrote a cookbook that was a little overwhelming and time consuming. So this year I'm like, I'm doing my membership, but I wanted it to be easily accessible for people um, because technology is so important. So I took my online membership and I put it and I created an app. So there is an app that you can get on Android and Apple. It is a paid app. So I don't recommend just going to the app, to the Apple store and downloading it. Um, go to onthefork.co to learn about it. And then you can get it. If you sign up for the annual membership, you get two months free. Um, it's less than $34 a month. I, it's just, it, it's me in an app. So you get recipe. Every recipe that I upload has a video. So I'm making the recipe in the app for you to see, to show you it's not difficult. So I'm not just giving meal plans. Every recipe comes with a video. We have, we just had our first guest speaker on Monday, all about mindset. Um, we are having a yoga instructor in about six weeks. We're going to have a gardening lady in this summer. So it's, um, it's more than just recipes. It's just me in an app inspiring you in a community environment. I think we all do better when we're supported with and surround ourselves with like-minded people. So when it comes to this relationship and journey with food, I want people to feel that sense of community inside my membership and my app. So yeah, go to onthefork.co to learn more about that. I love that. And I love that we get to see you because you can't see her right now, but I can. And she's just so damn cute. And she's been messing with her hair the whole time. And you look fine. Driving me crazy because it keeps getting caught in my... In her earbuds. <laughs> her hair's wrapped around her apple pod. She keeps messing with it. But you look beautiful, darling. Thanks, girl. Um, <laughs> so, okay. This is so amazing. And I is there anything um, that you'd like to leave our listeners with? Um, but if you don't know where to begin, and you know that you need to change what you're eating and how your relationship with food, just follow me on social or join my newsletter. All that is free stuff. You can find me everywhere at Shelly Can Help and it's Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-E-Y, Can Help. And I post every damn day. So there is endless amounts of free content out there that you can consume, but um, I would love to help you on your journey. So joining my newsletter is a really great way to I send one or two emails a week and it's just nothing but helpful information about how you can improve your relationship with food. To feel better. <sighs> this is she's laughing at my face. Um, this is definitely the the last of the Mohicans for me is this food thing, and I don't know why it's the last, but here I am. And I know there are a lot of other people, especially in the chronic pain world, that struggle with eating disorders and struggle with the food that we intake. And so this is a message not just to chronic pain people, but this is to everybody because we all need to have a better relationship with food. So with that, thank you so much for being here with us today, Shelly. I'm so happy to see you again. And obviously, we will continue to be friends moving forward. Um, And I will put all this up on social and in show notes. So you guys better follow her at Shelly Can Help and check out her cookbook, What's on Your Fork? Easy Healthy Meals for Everybody. It's on Barnes & Noble's and it's on Amazon. And I think they can buy directly from your website, can't they? No, no, it's just oh, okay. um, just Amazon. Yeah, just Amazon. But, um, there's a link. Okay. There's a link you can go to my website and go to Amazon. But um, thank you. I'm honored that you have been so gracious to have me on and let me let me use your platform to spread my message. Um, I'm just on a mission to help as many people and pay it forward as much as I can. So thank you, Lindsay, from the bottom of my heart for having me on today. You got it, and thank you for being here with me. 
you are exclusively invited to share this rolling up your sleeves and intentional eating VIP pain journey together. Let's get to the heart of how to heal with you by my side. Please follow the Pain Game Podcast wherever you digest your podcast content. We will be there. Visit us at thepaingamepodcast.com and follow us on all the socials. Thanks for listening, my little VIPs. Catch you on the other side.